Welcome to Design Nations and in this second video in hopefully a playlist of only two uh, we're looking at making um, a finger joint box from make a case to hold a, a stack of post-its and um, I have a an image here of uh, the kind of thing we're looking at making here. Well, I'm not going to make it. I'm just going to look at some techniques to help you do this kind of thing. Uh, we've got a post-it storage box here with a hinged lid. Okay, so I'm not going to show you how to do the hinge lid. Uh, and in fact, this video is in preparation for making a box with um, a, a number of styles of lids, sliding lids, hinge lids, um, uh, etc. But in this video, I'm just looking at some really key techniques to make life easier in the process of doing this. We finished the first video in this playlist with this CAD file. So I bought um, this <clears throat> this file or this image, this, well, I guess this CAD file here from makercase.com. I downloaded it as a DXF file and then I imported that file into TechSoft Design with gridlock turned on and then I showed how the dimensions of this important imported CAD file match the internal dimensions here being 101.6 millimeters match the internal dimensions the inside dimensions in this case that I had for this example box remember that this box or these dimensions are not the right dimensions for holding a three by three inch post-it you've got to get those dimensions right yourself but I did say that the height of the box should be 20 millimeters because I'm going to be working with a little bit of wood here for one of my lid designs, which just wants to sit in here comfortably. And I also highlighted there as well that there happens to be, is it half a mil? I'm probably gonna make that one mil actually. There's a little one millimeter overlap there because this wood here is slightly oversized. Double check that with your wood because it might not necessarily be the same situation as mine. Okay, all right, so where am I going to go with this now? I'm actually at this point going to get rid of these dimension lines because I don't actually want those for what I'm going to do next. And what I want to highlight here <clears throat> is that um, obviously, you know, I've got a grid lock on here, five millimeter grid. I imported this on the grid, but if I have a look at this, for some reason, it's not snapped onto the corner here of this. But it is, however, it is on this vertical edge. Um, so if you've bought it in with grid lock turned off, then I strongly suggest you put it, you, 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 Go back and you bring it, you import the file with the gridlock turned on. Okay, I'm going to undo this. So it's going to be edit and ungroup or control U. And now when I click on this, you can see that each line is individually broken up. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this. Uh, let's have a see. Yes, I'm going to group this together, control G. I'm going to go to step lock and then what I should find is that these are going to snap beautifully back onto uh, group that one okay back onto the grid and this is a really essential thing to do here okay with all of these group each one and I can ungroup later if I need to but basically spread them out a bit there as well ah now look at this one here this one is not going onto the grid for some reason so i need to find a solution to this problem okay so here is the solution what i'm going to do uh, there's actually lots of ways we can do this but the way that i'm going to do it is i'm going to right click on this central node here so i click on the cad file i right click on this little node and then i can move this around now i don't want to just move it around anywhere originally it was in the center of the graph you can notice if i move it over here if i right click again to drop it and then i click off and restack the image it goes back to the center I want to move this little node here, this move node, so it's on that corner there. And of course, it's not snapping on. So I'm going to turn off step block. I'm going to turn on the attach tool and I'm going to snap that onto the corner there, that corner of that finger joint. Now attach tool off, grid lock on. Uh, and now what I, ah, ah, can I? Hang on. No, no, this is not going to work because look, this is still not snapping in. <laughs> okay, so what I'm now going to do, I'm going to, I did that all wrong there. What I'm going to have to do actually is get a line tool. This is what I can do. This is what I can do. Draw a line. Let's make sure this is going to be a black line. Draw a line. A line. There you go. Okay, now I'm going to be a little bit careful here. No, I've grouped it together. We're going to be fine. Let's do that. Now, technically, I don't have to move this, but I will. 
I'll move it. I'm going to select it. I'm going to right click with the attach tool turned on. I'm going to move the, the little move node here over to there. I'm going to left click to snap it on. And then now I'm going to snap that onto the end of that line. That's brought this uh, outline, this, this CAD file for this panel in line to the grid. And I know that that distance there, ah, but there's going to be another problem here. Interesting. I know that that point is now going to be on the grid. If I now come to step lock, I should be able to snap that in. And notice, look, it is going to snap to this edge, but it's not snapping to this edge because this edge, that distance there isn't necessarily a whole integer. I'm not quite sure what that distance is. It's been created for me by maker case. So things are getting more complicated here. So that hasn't quite worked. Well, there is a final solution to this. Um, and unfortunately, it's not going to work out for my model. And I'm going to show you why. Let's get that dimension line on there again. And this is 107.6 millimeters, which means it's not an integer. OK, this is going to cause me a problem. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this shape again. Um, I'm going to right click on that little node there. But no, I'm not. <laughs> select it. I'm going to leave it in the middle. And now I'm going to attach it onto the end line there, okay? which means that the center of this is on the uh, on the grid. Now, if I turn on step lock again, I will find now that the bottom edge is correct because the height of this, remember, is 25, 28, sorry, 28, of course, because it's, let me get this right here, because it's 20. That's oh, 25, sorry, 25. I have to think about that one. Plus three for the material thickness at the bottom, 28, okay? But that is an integer. So it means that when I snap this onto that center point, it is going to align to the edge. But this length, and unfortunately that dimension line is no longer, no longer relevant. But if I add in this dimension line here, this is 107.6. That is not an integer. So you'll notice that this is not snapping onto the grid. So you need to make sure that you are working with whole integer numbers and you'll be able to use this technique to snap your uh, individual panels onto the grid. Absolutely essential. So I've messed up here big time because in this example, I have not got a whole integer dimension for uh, that length. OK, but we're going to keep going nevertheless. I'm going to delete those dimension lines right now. OK, so I can't get these panels to work. I'm still going to group it together. I'm still, for the time being, turn off the attached or grid lock on, bring it in. But obviously, I've messed up. And at, at this point, I would basically get rid of all of this. I would go back to make a case. I would think about my dimensioning. I'd plan my dimensioning on paper first, plan what I'm going to do on paper, get it right, re-enter in the right dimension, dimensions, as integers, and they bring it in, and everything's going to work, work smoothly. Let's grab this one here, the base panel. Let's just group that together there, and then I can move that one around. And again, I won't be able to get this really onto the grid at, at all because this one has got the 107.6 um, by 107.6 millimeter dimensions. That's just not going to work at all. Okay, right. So that's where we are now. Once we've got things on the grid, it allows us to do different things. And I'm going to refer to this edge over here to explain what different things I can do, because this is on the grid. So, for example, I can get some line tools here. Um, I can, with the grid lock on, because remember, this is 28 millimeters here, I can just perfectly snap into this, you know, and I can extend this out if I want to. Pull that down, it's on the grid. Pull that in. OK, that's added on a length to the to the box. I could get the attach tool. I could draw a line down there and then I can come to the delete part tool and I could trim those, those lines back. And now I've got um, a finger joint ready to accept um, a, a panel perpendicular to this. And I've extended the size of the finger uh, box out as well. What could I do down here? Let's select this box. And now what I'm going to do is go to start edit. And again, attach tool off, grid lock, or step lock in this case on. Now let's go grid lock. 
Let's go gridlock. I can now drag, select those nodes, and I can now drag those to the left and extend the size of that box while maintaining the integrity of the finger joint. And just to confirm here, if I now get my dimension line tool and the attach tool, this is still, whoops, he says, that is still three millimeters. Now, what I'm going to actually do here is go back there, back to this. And instead of doing it using the start edits and modifying the nodes, I'm going to select the whole thing. And instead now, I'm going to stretch it out. Whoops, make sure I've got gridlock turned on. This would be the wrong thing to do, because now if I get my dimension line tool, turn on the attach tool again, this should be three millimeters because I've stretched the whole box that stretched out to 3.42. So that would be the wrong thing to do. Okay. What else can we talk about here? Yes. How about, you know, adding in some other features? Let's say that I wanted to add something to the, the top here. Well, what I could do here is get, for example, circle with a given radius. Uh, let's go here with a radius of five millimeters. Let's turn off the attach tool, turn on the grid lock tool or the step lock tool. And that's now going to allow me, for example, to add in, let's say a circle there. Um, and what you can obviously do is delete those lines so it all becomes part of the same shape. But what I actually prefer to do here is keep all the lines because black does nothing. And then if I want to cut this out, I can come to the contour tool zero millimeter contour spacing, graphical path, choose blue for cut, and then I can click on the outside. And now what I have here is, yeah, I've got gridlock turned on. Oh, so I'll go and gridlock that, I think. What I've now got is, and how, how interesting, look, because I've started to move it, then turn on gridlock, it's not letting me step onto the grid. So if I escape that, let's do that again. Select it, uh, move it off, and now look, it's on the grid. And now I've got that outline in blue ready to cut. Um, okay, what else can I do here? I could select, let's just grab this shape here. Let's pull this down. I could take this top edge here, start edit, and I could select that edge and I could add, make it to a curve. And now I could look at potentially kind of, you know, changing the shape of that top profile which is quite interesting, quite like that, okay? So there's all sorts of things I can do here. There you go, that's an updated CAD file. I might just undo that. Now, that was allowing me to create some kind of, you know, a suitable contour. I'm just gonna make sure I go back to black here for a second. How about if I wanted to get like a perfect curved edge with a given radius? Well, as a tool up here, which I'm going to use, which is draw a circle with a given radius through two points. Well, let's have a see. Now, I know, if I right click on this, I know that the length of this top edge here is 100 and 7.6 because it's the external dimensions. So let's see here. If I put my radius, I want to have half that. I'm going to put a radius here to 110 to 55 millimeters. So let's see how this looks. And then I'm going to get the attach tool. I'm going to click there. I'm going to click there. Oh, it says not possible. Now this is where I should have tried this in advance, shouldn't I? Really? Let's just let's just pause the video and try this in advance. Okay, so I worked out where I went wrong there. Basically, my radius was wrong. So I've tried it with 100 and it worked quite well, but it was too uh, steep. So I'm going to put this to 120, not too steeply. I wanted to have a more shallow curve. Let's put it to 120. I'm going to click there. I'm going to click there. Look, and then I can click down here, and what I get is this nice curved top edge, which is like a controlled edge. I'm going to do that again, actually, with even a bigger radius. Let's try 150. Yeah, okay, I'm still not completely convinced by that curve there, but all right. And then now what I can do is get the delete part tool, get rid of that section there, and then I've got like a nice consistent curve to the box, or rather than using what I did earlier, which was, you know, kind of selecting a shape here, go to start edit, making this into a curve, and then manipulating that, that Bezier curve effectively to do something um, kind of at, 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 with, a, with a, an arc to it. I'm actually going to make that to a line and get rid of those two handles. 
Okay, um, and then of course what I could do again here is do my contour in blue around the outside for cutting. Um, do you need to keep the text in the middle of each panel? No, you don't, but sometimes it's useful to be aware of which panel is which. And I have had situations where what people have done is they've basically you know, deleted those. Oh, let's do it this way. They've deleted those, they've duplicated those, Okay, they've made it the box like this, and notice I've moved that with attach uh, on and gridlock turned off, so that was very bad of me. And what's ended up happening is they have got basically all their finger joints have got the finger sticking out, and when they put it together, it doesn't join. Okay, so you need to make sure that in your CAD file, you don't want to have all finger joints sticking out, you want to make sure you keep the original CAD file, which has the appropriate profile of finger joints so that everything sticks, everything interlocks, should I say, like that. I will just mention one more thing while I've got the camera up on this. You'll notice that I've made it so that all the burn marks from the laser cutter um, basically sparking on the metal mesh um, on the inside of the box. But if I was doing this um, in the uh, veneered wood then actually the top face of the wood tends to get more burnt than the underside where the laser sparks so i'd actually do the inverse i'd actually have it if i was doing this with the veneered wood i would wash the wood first but then have it so the underside of the wood is facing out and that actually looks much neater of course if you are uh, engraving something um, then you have to have the top face out because otherwise you won't see the engraving but if you're cutting things out um, then i would do the other way around just make sure then that you have to inverse the image that you're cutting out because you'll cut it out on the top face and you'll be turning it over and you'll see the inverse of the graphic that's being cut so make sure you inverse the graphic and then when you cut it and turn it over it's the right way around oh boy oh boy okay so there you go i think i think that is everything that i wanted to discuss lots of information there and the goal here is that if you can sort of take that on board and incorporate it into your own design work then you're going to find this whole process really a lot more straightforward okay cool i'll see you in uh, another video from um, design nations